Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am coming at you in the evening of the 8th of July, 2022. Um, getting on for the small hours of the 9th of July, that sort of thing. And it's raining outside. I wanted to make a video outside in the dark, but it's raining. And I thought, well, I haven't made a video from the great indoors since I've been here in Costa Rica. And there's nothing like having a ceiling fan above me for effect. It eh? makes it look like I'm in the tropics, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, so what I would like to talk to you about today is one of those hot topics, you know, one of those hot topics that uh, oh, you talk about, it, it gets everyone bloody emotional and crazy. But I'm going to talk about it anyway, because why not? And this is about the legendary, if you could call him that, John Peel, John Ravenscroft, who later became known as John Peel, who was a Radio 1 DJ and was a champion of all non-mainstream and all weird and all alternative music right away from the 1960s, right up until the early 2000s, where he died in about 2004. And everyone from Led Zeppelin to David Bowie to like bands like The Damned to half of the alternative bands from the 80s and the 90s, right up, I suppose, until the White Stripes in the early 2000s, um, have to thank him for their careers. He's responsible, I would say, more than anyone, for something that future historians will look back upon and think this great experimental renaissance that was the era of rock and roll. John Peel was probably more important than anyone in making British music less bland, less beige, less generic, less um, mainstream, and um, was pretty much the single conduit from which a lot of the more experimental and alternative and pioneering artists came through into the world. And all of a sudden, he's now been cancelled because apparently he had a little bit of How's Your Father with some girls who were groupies who we later discovered were as young as 13 and he married someone who was 15. And I went to look to see what sort of press releases that I could find about him, but they all seem to be written by journalists, if you can call them that, right? Who had very much that kind of woke, sanctimonious, pro me too sorts of, uh, you know, take sound bite, exaggerate things out of context. There did seem to be a sense of disingenuousness of the, um, you know, when I read the press release. Now, obviously, if it turns out that John Peel did nonce about a bit like that, you know, if he did, I don't know whether he would have done it knowingly, I don't know whether he would have done it unknowingly. But the trouble is that we're in a time now where they conflate one thing with another. Now, I don't have to tell you that. We all know that Jimmy Savile was evil. We all know that Jimmy Savile was doing a lot of stuff um, under the carpet, clandestinely, so to speak. Um, his front cover persona, as it were, was that he was this great charity worker, but in secret, he was noncing a lot of kids, right? And he seemed to have a, um, what they call a penchant, or for the, for the posh, a penchant, for doing naughty stuff to people he shouldn't have been doing naughty stuff to. We all know as well that Jeffrey Epstein um, was evil and he had his own island and he'd bring lots of underage girls there and they'd rape them. We also know that um, Harvey Weinstein, or that's how he pronounced his name, Steen Stein, whatever, was also um, pretty nasty and predatory and evil, right? But I'm not so sure about John Peel. I mean, I don't know, I cannot make a judgment because I weren't there and I haven't researched into it. But one of the things that I will tell you is that this just came up because Glastonbury Festival, there's the John Peel stage, right? And a bunch of uh, people decide that they want to rename the John Peel stage. Glastonbury, it appears, is now in the hands of the woke. But the thing that I find inconsistent is that we just come out of June, we just come out of Pride Month. What happened in Pride Month? Lots of um, drag queens, right, performing uh, lewd, naughty, disgusting, obscene stuff in front of kids who shouldn't be there, right, is being made acceptable. 
In June you have Pride Month and what's going on is they want to make paedophilia acceptable. But it appears that the same people who want to make paedophilia acceptable are also, because it seems to be coming from the same political wing, it seems to be coming from the same woke end of the scale, want to cancel John Peel. Right? That I look at that and I think, well, there's something a little bit inconsistent. There's something a little bit wrong with this picture here, right? Now, look, I would argue that, yes, by today's standards, if you look back, right, to the 1960s or whatever, there was a certain laissez-faire attitude towards sex that we would consider to be inappropriate now. But the thing is, some people, right, back in the day, uh, Jimmy Page, I think, my, um, I mean, I don't want to say, allegedly, I have to say that, don't I? Allegedly, got together with a, with a model who was a little bit too young for him, right? Um, that sort of thing, you know? So there's a few people who did, and John Peel maybe as well. I don't think that John Peel was evil. I don't think that John Peel was one of these people who was, um, you know, uh, wanting to be a, a naughty, nasty, malevolent, predatory person who would try to get away with doing things that he shouldn't have got away with. I think what happened, like a lot of those people back in the day, was that girls would come to them. But the difference in that era to now is that if you went back to like the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, the 1950s, right, was a hangover of the 1930s. You still had the old paradigm of the 1930s, right, there was a war in the 40s, so kind of would put a bit of a blip into things. But by the time the 1950s come along, you had these very old-fashioned, very staid people who were incredibly um, puritanical, incredibly uptight about a lot of stuff. And they always made this joke that no one ever spoke about sex. And kids, as a result, had no idea what to do when that they were adults. They often made this joke about how sex was, everyone thought sex was something you carried coal in. Right? Terrible joke, I know. Then the 1960s happened, and then at some point in the 1960s into the early 70s, the birth control pill came out. And at the same time, a new generation of people came about, and um, a very relaxed, laissez-faire attitude towards sex happened which then you ended up having the sexual revolution, you ended up having kind of the free love era in the 1960s. And um, what would happen is that a lot of girls a bit, a bit of makeup on and if they were early developers, would try to look older than their age. And as a result of that, you ended up with this groupie culture that happened in that time. And um, people turned a blind eye to it, they weren't really all that fussed about it, whether these girls might have been slightly under the age of consent. Most uh, people at the time didn't really care. And as a result of that, groupies come to you. If you were one of these people like a DJ or like a pop star, or rock star or whatever, and um, if they look old for their age, you didn't really think much about it. You'd find yourself in a situation which, well, you'd be me too'd for in the time that we're in now. And I think it would have been very likely that a lot of people would have been caught up in this. But I'm saying that there would be a big difference between people who would have been like that on one hand and the knowingly evil, malevolent, scheming, plotting people like Jimmy Savile. There would have been a big difference between them. Right. That's what I'm saying. So when I look at this era that we're in at the moment where you have the... Pride Month, where you have the, the, you know, the trans ideologues who are coming along and they are attempting to make, you know, children going to drag queen events normal, which does seem quite obscene and disgusting a thing to shove down our throats. And the woke seem to be going along with this on one hand, but then they cancel John Peel on the other hand. And it does seem that there's a level of inconsistency there. And it could be, I mean, it could be right that John Peel did do what he did, right? Hold on, I need a sip of coffee. It's one of the good things about being indoors while making a video. So, controversial subject, I know, but if we are in an era where on one hand they appear to be making noncery acceptable, 
why would they cancel someone from the past for an answer too? There does seem to be something wrong there. And the only conclusion I can come to is that they wish to take away John Peel's legacy. Because they're right, had he never have done any of these things and had none of this stuff ever have happened before, right, that would be one thing. But his legacy is that he was one of the most important promoters of alternative to mainstream music that existed in the time, the era of rock and roll. Um, a time when, um, you know, historians, future historians, centuries into the future, will look back and think, you know, they'll take the late 20th century in relation to the early 20th century, to the 19th century, to the 18th century, to the 17th century. And we can look at the 17th century and we can look and think about how, you know, there was um, Johann Sebastian Bach and there was a Baroque period. We can look at the 18th century and we can look at how there were people like Mozart and Beethoven and likes of that, you know. We can look into the 19th century. I'm not all that well versed in musicians and composers of the 19th century, but you know, you would have had the like, you would have carried on from the era of Mozart and Beethoven. There would have been a lot of orchestral music. There would have been a lot of piano music in particular in that era as well. And then you can look at the time when the 20th century come along and, and then, you know, the era of recorded sound, the era of shellac, the era of vinyl, the era of analog recording and then digital recording. And the thing about what made the rock and roll era very special was the fact that because you could record sound at that time and because you could record pictures at that time and because you had people who could very easily travel around the world at that time as well, um, and you had the beginning of a media, a mass media forming, it, for the first time ever, people could hear music from all over the world. And there was a world music fusion. Also in the time when Elvis Presley came along and rock and roll came along, just happened to coincide with the time when the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder had been invented. And for the first time ever, you had multi-track recording abilities um, with hi-fi sound, which allowed you um, to reproduce um, uh, and music which would sound hi-fi enough that people could listen to it at home. Rock and roll was a little bit ropey in the 50s and in the 60s, they really didn't know how to record it. They knew how to record big bands and they knew how to record um, orchestras and the like. But by the time the late 60s and into the early 70s and you know the late 70s, um, they had finally mastered the, re the recording of rock and roll music and then it's the 80s, of course, when things started to switch over from analog to digital and synthesizer and electronic stuff and drum machines came in, as well as, of course, you know, real bands. There was a Renaissance era. And if you were to go from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, at least in the UK, now, of course, rock and roll came from America, but Britain superseded um, America pretty much when it comes to the music, the variation of music, and when it comes to bands and the likes, Britain was pretty much the center of the universe when it came to that. And John Peel was one of the, um, was pretty much the single most important person when it came to championing music that was not bland, mainstream rubbish. He was always looking for musicians and bands that were different from that, that wasn't the normal. And his e evening show on Radio One was something that uh, people would look forward to. And um, so now we find that he's had a little bit of shenanigans with a few people that are a little bit too young. And, um, you know, are they gonna, they're gonna throw him under the bus and cancel him and treat him like he's no different from Jimmy Savile. But they've done this a month after normalizing or attempting to normalize drag queens in, uh, you know, around children. And the fact is that, like, you know, uh, this is happening in schools now, apparently in the UK even, where they're getting drag queens, I mean, men who are, men who are not women, basically. Men who have not had the transition. Men who are clearly men dressed up as women, going, who are, you know, I don't know, autogynophiles, going into schools and teaching children about twerking. And somehow that's okay in this era that we're in at the moment. But now we're not allowed to like John Peel anymore.
because he did something that people had a laissez-faire attitude towards, you know, sleeping with groupies in the 1960s and the 1970s because they didn't find out that their age, but in their own mind thought that they'd been old enough, right? But just had a more laissez-faire attitude than people have these days, but didn't involve knowingly, you know, knowingly preying on clearly, obviously prepubescent children with clearly obscene shit like what is going on now, what was going on last month during Pride Month. And I'm looking and I'm not saying that any of this was right. I'm not saying that John Peel was right, obviously. If he did what he did, I'm not condoning it. But the fact is, it looks to me like this is an attack on the cultural, leg the cultural legacy of what the UK contributed to the world in the era of rock and roll. They want to take them all out. They want to murder our culture. And if anyone attempts to question it, like I'm attempting to question this, they wish to, um, you know, the, they will basically say that you're condoning something that I am not condoning. And I find that wrong. And um, so I'm just putting it out there for food for thought. I'm not saying that any of this is right, obviously not. But I'd like to know what you think. Because I personally do not think, right, whatever has been said about John Peel, that he's an anywhere near comparable to Jimmy Savile or Jeffrey Epstein or, um, or Harvey Weinstein. I don't think that at all. Comments are welcome down below. You can let me know what you think. Sorry it's such a controversial subject, but it's one of the things that I really felt I had to talk about. I know there's a lot of other shit going on in the world at the moment, but hey, let the world fucking go to shit, really. Let's just have some popcorn and sit down and watch it for a laugh, eh? Right, see you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, do your bit to help send big tech to the land of MySpace by having a look at the show notes below and checking out our alternative platforms.